Hallelujah. We hear all praises. Hallelujah. Man, by his grace, we get to shoot another video. Uh, thank you for clicking. Um, we want to give all honor, glory, praise to the Father, Yah, His Son, Yahusha, and the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKadosh. Let me see if I can uh, turn this little light on real quick. That's cool. All right. So, it is Black History Month. So, what we want to do is indeed talk about some of our ancient Hebrew ancestors. Yes, we are getting into more of the ancient Hebrew Christians. And today, we're going to be talking about our ancient uh, forefather, Melito of Sardis. Melito of Sardis was bishop of the church in Sardis, and he died around 180 AD. Now, we know uh, Sardis from Revelations. In, uh, in chapter 3, verses 1 through 6, um, I should read it real quick. Let me get my, my script real quick. My fault, y'all. I should have came prepared, man. You see me? You see me? Not even prepared, though. But it's okay. Because by the grace of the Lord, he gonna get us to where we need to be, man. See? I'm right here now. Revelations 3, 1 to 6. And it says, And to the angel of the church in Sardis, write, These things says he who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your works. As you have a name that you are alive, but you are dead. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. For I have not found your works perfect before Elohim. Remember, therefore, how you have received and heard. Hold fast and repent. Therefore, if you will not watch, I will come upon you as a thief. And you will not know what hour I will come upon you. You have a few names, even in Sardis, who have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He who overcomes shall be clothed in white garments, and I will not blot out his name from the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Hallelujah. So those was the commandments of our wonderful Lord. And he was speaking to the church of Sardis, one of the seven churches at that time. And uh, that it's speculated that the angel of the churches is the bishop of that church. So that's where the me he would have been the one that got the message, the bishop. And then he would have told uh, the members of the church. Uh, so Melito would have been a direct descendant uh, because he, he, he learned with the same generation that learned from John. So he's like a second generation. Um, it says, well, my notes, they say, um, lots of his works were lost, but it's a lot that's also recovered. And I'll put a link in the description where you can read, uh, some of his works. It's very edifying. I checked into some, to, uh, to some of it, you know, for the research for this video. And, and I definitely plan on digging back into it. The man was very enlightened and, uh, has some very edify edifying things to say about the gospel and um, the faith. So our man Melito, he was known by all the, the uh, church forefathers that you normally would hear about, most of them, like Origen, Eusebius, um, Jerome, Tertullian, all of these people uh, knew who he was. Uh, he was a prominent bishop. He was known by uh, Polycrates, not Polycarp, but he was he was he was known by Polycarp, but he was also known by a man named Polycrates, who was the bishop of Ephesus. So we know uh, Ephesus, and that's one of the seven churches as well. And um, he knew him, and he also knew Polycarp and Irenaeus. Polycarp was a student of John the Apostle, and Irenaeus was also a student and uh, of John and. Um, and friend of Polycarp. Now, all of these Christians that we're talking about right here, they were mostly in Asia Minor, which is uh, modern-day Turkey, where the seven churches was at. And they followed more so of a, a John uh, type of tradition because, you know, uh, they learned from John. So it's not like they could get immediately the teachings of, uh, of Peter or Paul on a day-to-day -day without 
you know, uh, the extra stuff. It's kind of hard to explain. Like you, you would have, you have the letters, but then you also have what they would teach to them personally, you know, so that it would be different. Um, let's see. It says Melito was a Hebrew by birth and was heavily influenced by the teachings of John, which we was just talking about. Uh, Johannine tradition is what they call it. Um, he was also uh, very intelligent in Greek culture as well. He was trained up to, uh, in rhetoric and to be a, a philosopher and, and, and all of these things. So he, he knew uh, both sides. Uh, it was said by Polycrates, Bishop of Ephesus, that Melito's whole walk was full of the Holy Spirit. And, uh, so that so that's what's up, you know. And because he was a Hebrew and he practiced a Hebraic style of being a believer in Christ, a Christian, he was what they would call in the Western uh, tradition a quarto decimus or quarto decimani which is Latin, um, which means, I think it means fourth, fourth. Um, but it, it basically what this term meant was that you celebrated, quote unquote, Easter on the day of the Passover, the 14th of Nisan, uh, or, or uh, yeah, the, four, the 14th of Nisan, Abib, um, The Western, the Western Church, uh, the church based in Rome and, and in the Latin-speaking countries, uh, they did uh, Easter on the Sunday of the week of Passover. So whatever day Passover was on, they they uh, still did it on a Sunday. So uh, to 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 celebrate the Lord's Day, the resur the resurrection and. Um, the Pentecost and all the other things that happened on the eighth day. This matter was settled, however, uh, when Polycarp, uh, he went over and spoke to the Bishop Anicetus and they, uh, you know, Anicetus said, this is how Peter and Paul told them, uh, to do it. And, you know, it makes sense because they were, they probably wasn't as influenced by the Jewish calendar as the Hebraic Christians in Asia Minor were. Um, they were probably mostly Romans and, and Greeks and other uh, Gentile nations. But uh, they said that Paul and Peter allowed them to do it on this day and taught them to do it on this day. And uh, Polycarp was saying, you know, well, John said, you know, we could do it on this day at the Passover. So, you know, they agreed to disagree. They had communion and they left in love and, and in peace and in communion still. So that's what's up. They was able to deal with, um, excuse me, they was able to deal with their problems uh, in a, in a Christ-like manner. So, now into the works that he did. One of them is called Peri Pascha, which is uh, Passover uh, or Easter. It's what they call it in Western traditions. But in Eastern traditions, it's called Pascha, which is Pesach. Um, this is a writing which is mostly about New Covenant teachings, uh, how we transition into the New Covenant. It's also about the Passover and Exodus and how it's a typology of Hamashiach and his uh, death, burial, and resurrection. Um, it also talks about some of the studies of Christ's nature. Um, it's something called Christology, where you study the nature and essence of Christ and uh, his relationship to us, his relationship to the Father, but it's like the study of Christ. <laughs> so, I want to get into some examples from out of Peri Pascha. And the first example I want to get is from the first chapter of the book. Um, I want to focus on verse, I'll, I'll read verse 7 and 8 and um, all the way to the bottom. I, I really should just read the whole thing, huh? So I'll read the whole thing. You can follow along with me and we'll talk about it. It says, hence, the sacrifice of the sheep and the sending of the lamb to slaughter and the writing of the law, each led to and issued in Christ, for whose sake everything happened in the ancient law, and even more so in the new gospel. For indeed the law issued in the gospel 
the old and the new, both coming forth together from Zion and Jerusalem, excuse me, and the commandment issued in grace, and the type and the finished product, and the lamb and the son, and the sheep and the man, and the man and God. But a one who was born as son and led to slaughter as a lamb and sacrificed as a sheep and buried as a man, rose up from the dead as God, since he is by nature both God and man. He is everything, and that he judges, he is law, and that he teaches, he is gospel, and that he saves, he is grace, and that he begets, he is father, and that he is begotten, he is son, and that he suffers, he is sheep, and that he is buried, he is man, and that he comes to life again, he is Elohim, he is God. Such is Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, to whom be glory forever, amen. Praise Yah. So it was, it was a lot in there. Um, it was excellent, though. He was t talking about the, uh, the Passover law, where you have to sacrifice the sheep. And how um, the fulfillment of it and the perfection of the the old law has been perfected in Christ, and now instead of a, a sheep, it was a man as a sheep. It's the it's the perfecting of it. Everything in Christ has been is being fulfilled. Um, the sacrifice, um, the death that he rose up, that he had to be slaughtered like a lamb. The fact that he was born like a son, and how the old law is in the new law the new gospel, the new covenant, how the new covenant, when followed, completes and fulfills the old covenant, and how they both come together from Zion, which we read from Galatians, is, is the new covenant, which above all is free, Jerusalem. And the commandment is issued in grace, as it's, as it's read in the gospel of John, the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Christ, and um, it's, it's, it's the, the new covenant just the fulfillment of the prophets um, and how he's everything. He judges, he teaches, all, he saves. Man, this is an excellent transcript and this is just how it starts off. I didn't want to even spend that much time, but it was so excellent. We had to sp speak on it. Um, here's another. Uh, a lot of people blame uh, Melito for, um, for, for blaming Israelites for killing Christ. He was one of the first people to document it, to write that, you know, oh, Israel. We're going to read it. But um, he was a he was an Israelite, so he's actually la lamenting for himself and his own people when you look at this. But uh, in verse 73 um, of, of the same book in Peri Pascha, it says, Why, O oh Israel, did you do this strange injustice? You dishonored the one who had honored you. You held in contempt the one who held you in esteem. You denied the one who publicly acknowledged you. You renounced the one who proclaimed you his own. You killed the one who made you to live. Why did you do this, O Israel? Yeah, so, you know, he he talks about, you know, what we did. And, and our ancestors did say his blood be on us and our ancestors, which is why you see we going through the things that we go through now If you because we didn't accept Christ. Uh, he destroyed us in 70 AD because we didn't accept Christ. 135, we got destroyed because we didn't accept Christ. If you don't know about that, check out my video on um, the Jewish-Roman Wars and our first Hebrew Christian video. And, um... You know, we didn't accept Christ when we was in, in West Africa. We was Muslims. You know, we was on some other stuff. We was Muslims or we was um, doing Old Testament worship with idols or, you know, with other gods, um, mixing and matching. At the end of the day, we wasn't in Christ. And every time we're not in Christ, we are not going to succeed. Besides this book and the uh, Passover Easter um, situation, um, he also wrote a, a apology. An apology is, um, if you ever heard of apologetics, it's a defense of the faith. So it's defending what you believe. And uh, he wrote one to the emperor at the time, Marcus Aurelius, actually trying to convince him to become a, a Christian and um, to understand the faith. 
So I'm a, um, I'm going to read the first chapter of this. And it says, uh, It is not easy, said Melito, speedily to bring into the right way the man who has long time previously been held fast by error. It may, however, be affected for when a man turns away ever so little from error, the mention of the truth is acceptable to him. For just as when a cloud breaks ever so little, there comes fair weather, even so, when a man turns towards the Most High, the thick cloud of error which deprived him of true vision is quickly withdrawn from before him. For error, like disease and sleep, Long holds fast those who come under its influence, but truth uses the word as a gourd and smites the slumberers and awakens them. And when they are awake, they look at the truth and also understand it. They hear and distinguish that which is from that which is not. For there are men who call iniquity righteousness. They think, for example, that it is righteousness for a man to err with the many. But I, for my part, affirm that it is not a good excuse for error that a man errs with the many. For if one man only sin, his sin is great. How much greater will be the sin when many sin together? So this is, you know, his opening for that. And, and he coming strong, you know, he, he he talking about, look, when you in error, it ain't easy to come to truth. And trust me, I know, because it's it's times where I've been in error and it's times where I mess up. And if you, you know, uh, you got to just knock down the wall of pride in order to uh, come out of that and see truth. And, and then once you see it, it becomes so acceptable to you and you love it. Um, and he's talking about how error would just hold on to you like a sheep and I mean uh, like a like a disease and sleep um, You know, that's how it is with this old covenant disease in a sense man when you were trapped under bondage and the law it, it, It'll hold you like a disease and, and squeeze you until there's no life left But that's what he said, you know, you can't put the the uh, new wine and old wine skins unless they burst um, But you know, we're going to continue on. He's also known... Oh, yeah. Before we move on. That, uh... This apology was found in Syriac. So, you see, uh... You know, our people were speaking Aramaic, which is Syriac. And our people were speaking, uh... Greek as well. And they were speaking Hebrew. So, we was multilingual. And these are the languages that we would speak in those days. Um... Alright. So, our boy Melito... Oh, I just noticed my music style. It's all good, man. Here, let me uh, let me see if I can put something on real quick. We chilling, y'all. You know, I hope y'all enjoying the video. You know, I do Melito, ancient Hebrew Christian, though. You know, these people are never talked about. You know, that's why I want to bring them out. You know, this is uh, this is Black history. You know, ancient like Black Hebrew that. history for sure, for sure. All right. So our boy Melito, he's also known for being the, one of the first people to have an Old Testament canon. So uh, I believe in our last video, we was talking about uh, our brother St. Hegesippus. He had a Hebrew canon. Uh, our boy here, Melito, he has a canon too. So all praises for that. And, uh, he went to Palestine to learn from the ancients and the other elders and rabbis what was the uh, accurate books of the, of the Old Testament. And this is what it was. Uh, and it says, Accordingly, when I went east and came to the place where these things were preached and done, I learned accurately the books of the Old Testament and sent them to you as witness below. Their names are as follows. Of Moses, five books. Genesis, Exodus, Numbers, Leviticus, Deuteronomy, Joshua, uh, Naveh, uh, Judges, Ru, um, I'm kind of stuck right now, is, but I got to figure out what Nave is. Um, Roof of Kings, four books, four kings, of Chronicles, two, the Psalms of David, the Proverbs of Solomon, um, Wisdom also, Ecclesiastes, Song of Psalms, Job, 
of the prophets, Isaiah, Jeremiah, of the 12 books, one book, uh, Daniel, Ezekiel, Ezra, from which also I have made the extracts, dividing them into six books. So you have all these books. Um, the only difference is, uh, is that there's no Esther. We're not sure why. Um, maybe that's not in, maybe that wasn't in the Eastern tradition at this time. Um, you have Nehemiah was probably in the Ezra books. Because it said it was, it was, um, yeah, it's probably in that. And Jeremiah uh, was um, probably contained Lamentations as well, which is why you don't see Lamentations. Uh, so that's something interesting. It kind of matches uh, St. Hegesippus. We don't see many apocryphal books. We have Wisdom. Uh, that could be Wisdom of Solomon or maybe that's something else. But we have a book called Wisdom. So, uh, yeah, we give our praises for that. But it, it pretty much looks like the the the, uh, the Jewish Tanakh or it looks like the, the Protestant canon in your Bibles, in your King James, for the most part. And um, our last point is that we want to talk about his eschatology, which is his belief for the end times. Uh, Melito believed in a thousand year reign um, that would be on earth. Christ would reign on earth for a thousand years, which was also uh, taught by Irenaeus, who learned from, uh, who learned with Polycarp, who learned uh, from John. And we also, uh, they, we see that they both believe in the same tradition concerning the end times. So what I might do is do a whole separate video on that because uh, Irenaeus, he wrote down his whole belief on that and he got a good book called uh, Against Heresies, which I'll probably make a whole video on later. Uh, but yeah, they believed in a thousand year reign, so that's what we gonna hold tight on. But just like we read in, uh, the, uh, in Revelations to the Church of Sardis, you know, we gotta awaken which trying to, you know, whatever's trying to die. If, if we gotta awaken that, make it alive, wash our garments so that we can be uh, walking with Christ in white and um, and be worthy, you know, by his grace, of course, as he continue to cleanse us and purify us with the work of the Holy Spirit. Man, praise y'all. Thank you for watching, fam. Uh, may you continue enjoying uh, Black History Month. Hope you're learning a lot. Um, I know me and my wife, we got some things planned that we want to do on uh, Instagram. So, you know, if you want, you can follow us on that. Uh, and uh, thanks. Oh, yeah. Also, I got an album coming out soon. Zion Night 64. It's coming. It's coming. Uh, bless you all, fam. Thank you for watching. Most High in Christ bless you. Shalom.